yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? For I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then from my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out of this world. Now, if Christ is preached, that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is fruitful. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have, have perished. If in this life we only have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiful. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ, the first fruits. Afterwards, those who are Christ at his coming. And then comes the end. When he, when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father, to the Father. When he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he has said all things are put under him, it is evident that he will put all things under him is expected. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. It starts out perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture. Amen. Bursting my sight. Some angels, angels descending, bring from above. Will you join in and sing with me this hymn of the church? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, blessed assurance.
Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Air of salvation. Air of salvation. Purchase of God. Born of his spirit. This is, this is my story. story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. hearts we come before you with hung down heads we come before you today because once again this life has shown us that death is as much a part of it as our breathing and entering into it today God we recognize and see that there is a time for everything, for everything under heaven. There is a time to live and there is this time to die. But today, God, although we have heavy heads, heavy hearts and hung down heads, our spirits are lifted. 
because we recognize God this servant who is before us was your servant we recognize that Paulette was a woman of faith we recognize that this is not an imminent end in tragedy but rather it is a expected entrance of triumph we recognize that there is a transition not an end we thank you God that she has transitioned from this life to the next that thing that she taught so many children about on Sunday mornings and Sunday school classes we thank you God that she is now realizing <laughs> the glories of heaven that she could only explain with her mouth to those who would listen and now she enjoys with her actual person those things that the word tells us and tries to explain about a translucent gold about pearly gates and about life with you forever God we thank you today but it's not about Paulette at this moment today God we pray for those who are here who is mourning her transition God I pray for them God, would you undergird them? Would you take them in your care? Would you say to them the things that their heart needs to hear so that in this they can as well have joy knowing that Mrs. Browning is in a better place. And God, for this we give you advanced glory and praise. Our hearts are uplifted today because we realize you're in control of all things. And we say to this again, yay and amen. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be removed. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. I will read to you from the Gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I'll go away, prepare a place for you. And if I come again, I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not the way. Where there are goers, how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to me 
but unto my Father. If I had, if you had known me, you would have known that. You shall have known my Father also, and from henceforth you shall know him and give and have seen him. Amen. so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the say the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him oh Jesus, you're my precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more, and I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, my friend, and I know that you are with me, will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him oh and oh. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Jesus, you're my precious Jesus, oh, for grace, oh, for grace, oh, for grace, to
Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. 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 an acknowledgement from Andre Carson, United States Congressman, to the family of Paulette Browning. I am saddened to learn of Paulette's passing and extend my heartfelt sympathies to you during this time. Please know that you are not alone and that you and your family will remain in my thoughts and prayers. Although the loss of a loved one is never easy, I hope you find comfort in knowing that Paulette's memory will live on for years to come. In this time of grief, may you find comfort by celebrating Paulette's life and spending time with family and friends. May this love and support, along with the prayer, power of prayer, bring you peace and strength in the days to come. With sincere sympathies, Andre Carson, member of Congress. I have a resolution from New Hope Baptist Church in San Antonio, Texas. Resolution for Sister Paulette Browning on behalf of Deacon Samuel Browning and Sister Brenda Browning. Beyond life's golden sunset lies a city bright and fair. In the land of God's sorrow, Tomorrow our loved ones await us there. Tis a place of wondrous beauty where they know not grief or fears and where God shall wipe away all tears. So rejoice today in knowing that your loved one has found peace in the land of God's tomorrow where his blessings shall never cease. We, the pastor and members of New Hope Baptist Church, Extend our deepest sympathy to the bereaved family in the home going of your loved one, Sister Paulette Browning. In the midst of your pain and sorrow, remember these words of consolation. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. To Deacon Samuel Browning and Sister Brenda Browning, who are very faithful members of New Hope, we want to place on record our love and prayers for you and your family. May the everlasting love of God comfort and console you now and in the days to come. We pray that the precious memories that you were blessed to share with your dear sister will serve as a source of comfort and strength. Therefore, be it resolved that we present a copy of this resolution to the family with a written reminder of the Lord's promise. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will also be retained in the files of New Hope Baptist Church. Humbly submitted, Reverend Joshua Jobert, Sister Juanita Washington, Clerk. Greater Faith Christian Center Vision International Program, Kokomo, Indiana. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, the Spirit said that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. It is with saddened regretfulness that we experience loss and transition. The cares of this world at times seem overwhelmingly However, there is a glorious hope that remains in the hearts of those whose trust is in the Lord. We glory in the fact that Miss Paulette Sue Browning 
has transitioned and has been rewarded the promised journey to the home beyond the skies. Some glad morning, when this life is over, we too will fly away to a home on God's celest celestial shores. Yes, we too shall fly away. This is the promise of those who trust in the Lord. Myself, Bishop Ramon Roderick Ogillespie, my wife, Lady Evelyn, and the entire Great Faith Christian Center Church undergird you at this time of bereavement in prayer and faithful invocation to God. Please know that we are available to you and welcome any opportunity to aid you through this time. Submitted this 13th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2024, Bishop Ramon Roderick Ogillespie Sr., presiding prelate, Vision International Program, Great Faith Christian Center Church, Kokomo, Indiana. Wayman Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church. Resolution of respect for Paulette Sue Browning. According to his tender mercy, God, it, who in his infinite wisdom has seen fit to move from our midst, our beloved sister in Christ, Paulette Sue Browning, by means of death on the 20th day of March 2024. Whereas God has surely called home one of his best, a beloved member of Wayman Chapel, and a person of high regard and character, gentle in spirit, loved by all who knew her. Whereas, although the passing of Sister Paulette Browning has left her loved ones in our congregation with broken hearts, we acknowledge and accept the will of God. We know their hearts bleed with sorrow, but there is a comfort in knowing God will not put more on us than we can bear. And whereas we believe the words of Jesus in John 14 that encourage us to let not your heart be troubled, yet believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, that where I am, there ye may be also. Whereas Sister Paulette, as a faithful member of Wayman Chapel, faithfully attended morning worship, as well as the Berean Bible study and Sunday school, she was a Sunday school teacher, as well as demonstrating faithfulness in the ministries of help. Therefore be it resolved, that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace Sister Paulette Browning, but we'll attempt to demonstrate her love for you through our actions towards you. Humbly submitted by the officers and members of the Wayman Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church on the 13th day of April in the year of our Lord, 20 and 24, Reverend William Gary Pastor, Wayman Chapel AME Church. And all God's people said amen. 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 I greet you in the majestic name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. I, I am so glad that God has given us an opportunity to celebrate what he does with his, his people. He gives them the reward of the faithful life and the faithful living. Amen. And we just thank God that she's able to walk around heaven all day. She may be like her sister, start running around heaven all day. Who knows? Amen. 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 I'm going to worship the Lord, and I'm going to celebrate. I tell folk all the time, tell your neighbor, neighbor, get out of the way. You won't get hurt. Because I come to worship and come to praise him. I, I, I want to uh, acknowledge the uh, 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 the presence of the clergy there here. I see Reverend Wilson, uh, Brenda Wilson, and then of course we we've seen uh, Reverend Williams and Reverend Browning. 
Are there any other clergy persons here other than Bishop Oglesby? Uh, now, I, I've, I, I spoke with the family, and if I am in error, I apologize because I am going to do what you and I discussed. So there's a family tribute, and before the family tribute, the Z1 would have a word, or two-minute word, and then we would give you an opportunity to do that, and you, just, you would just all just over to, the, to my left, and, uh, and then once everyone has, been, everyone has seated, and we'll call the first person up, and then you will have your two-minute expression. And then the family will come, and we're here for them. And so they don't have a limit as far as I'm concerned. It, we're here for you. And, uh, and so uh, your family member might tell you you're through, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. You, we're here for you. And uh, so the family would have an opportunity to come with family tributes. And so uh, at, this, at this time, we're going to ask that Bishop Oglesby would come, and then uh, if they, they so choose to, uh, uh, the other three members of the family who are also clergy. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for this time, this opportunity uh, to say something on uh, behalf of uh, Sister, well, Mother Paulette Browning. Um, it was a pleasure to be introduced to uh, this Browning family when uh, Miss Katrina, I think she had to walk out for a minute. Uh, she came and visited us uh, with, with, uh, with our dear sister in the back there. Um, it was a chance meeting to be able to, to meet the rest of the family. And with uh, Sister Browning, I, she, was, she, was a, she, was, she was a funny person. She had jokes. <laughs> so it was always a delight to be around her to see how she would, how she would, uh, well, how she would take certain things that were happening. Uh, it would be interesting to just kind of be a fly on the wall and hear what her interpretation of things were. Um, knowing that she was a Sunday school teacher, uh, just kind of, it makes sense that um, she had a, a uh, disposition that was youthful, um, kind of, you know, kind of, able to identify with that childlike disposition. And it reminded me of a story that I heard um, of a young man who had been uh, a pretty rascal, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess you would consider him to be a, a pretty, you know, um, I don't know, how do you want to say it, like a dastardly, um, inquisitive young man who may have had problems with uh, behavior. It, am I saying that? Okay, otherwise, bad kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and this kid, they put him in a private school. And, um, you know, he was, he was bad in all the courses. But um, they gave him an award for being the most improved student when they took him to the, to the Catholic school. Uh, I probably shouldn't be saying Catholic. But anyway, they took him to a private school. And... Um, and they ask him at the award ceremony, what was the, what was the reason that you did so well at this school when you were just a rascal at the rest of them? <laughs> he says that, um, well, when they, when they brought us to that, to that initial you know, ceremony of being you know, a part of this school, um, they had that guy up on the plus sign, and he was... He was pretty beat up, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to be him. I knew they were pretty serious about this education thing, and so I I think about you know those kind of things when it comes down to to Mother Browning that there was probably one thing she really really got well, and that was her family, her mother and father were connected to church. They were connected to God, and all there there may have been other things that were missed. This thing she got very clearly, that she needed a relationship with God. It may have been childlike in its essence, but I remember Jesus saying it as I go to my seat. 
that unless you come as one of these little ones, you should not expect to see the kingdom. And I just believe today that Mother Browning is, as uh, Pastor Gary said, walking around heaven all day. God bless. Okay, now you can hear me. I decided to come up as clergy and to let you know that, you know, we're family and we're always going to be here with you. Even though I'm Edmund, you're Browning, we're still family. And we know how we became family and all. And so I'm just so happy to be here to represent the rest of the Edmonds family. They all send their love and support to you, those that couldn't make it. And also my mother, uh, Alice Good, she wanted you to know that she was thinking of you and all. She wanted to come, but you know how that can be when you're 96 and you wake up sometimes, you're not able to move like you thought you wanted to. But she wanted me to make sure that I told you that she was thinking of you. Uh, for me, I'm one of the younger ones in the family, so Paulette's seven years older than me. So I wasn't involved with her too much, but I also do know that whatever Paulette wanted, Paulette got, okay? That's the way she was. She wasn't going to miss out on anything that she wanted. She didn't care how much it cost, what it would take. She was going to get it. So that's one thing I remember about her and all. And then to see that she was involved in Sunday school just goes along with how we were raised. We were raised in Sunday school. That was our main introduction to church and all. And then Aunt Irina and Uncle Sam were involved in Sunday school. I can remember Aunt Irina was superintendent forever, seems like, and stuff. So it just seems like Paulette just carried on the family tradition of being involved in Sunday school and with the children and all. So I just wanted you to know, see, I'm going to try and take two minutes, Pastor. Uh, I just wanted you to know that we're always here with you, and I don't want us to lose contact at any time that we stay in contact with each other, okay? All right. And it's always so good to see you, Reverend Gary. I've been knowing him forever, too, so... Come on, wife. <laughs> Good morning to everyone and to the Browning family. Just want to share, uh, Sister Brown was a member of our Sunday school class, and sometimes we would have stories and stuff that we would share, family traditions. So one time, uh, I told her that you know my family from south from Georgia, and we did some things like anything. My family hunt; they hunt all kinds of animals, and we would have those animals for dinner. And so I shared with her. I said, "Sister Brownie, do you know why the uh, groundhog didn't see his shadow?" And she said, "Why? Because we ate him." And she just <laughs> laughed and <laughs> laughed, laughed, laughed. She thought that was the funniest thing, but also. <laughs> And so I'm going to miss that beautiful smile that she has, but I thought also I wanted to share with the family uh, a poem that I thought be fitting for Sister Brownie in her memory. It's called The Final Flight. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard his call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to play. 
Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found the peace at the end of the day. If my party has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship share, a laugh, a kiss, oh yes, these things I will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow, I wish you sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I savored much, good friends, good times, a love one's touch. Perhaps my time seem too, all too brief, don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wants me now. He has set me free. Thank you. Well, I was just reminded that I should have gotten up here instead of Brenda, mainly because Paulette and I were the same age. And I did not get to talk to her as much as I wanted to, but I did keep in contact with her and talk to her periodically. We grew up together, and I always used to go to their house and stay all night and have a great time. And we, of course, we were in school together and everything. But the one thing that I really... Uh, really liked was when Paulette came to ISU, Indiana State University, and I was there too, and so we enjoyed each other there as well. Paulette was such a, a sweet person, and she was, she was kind, but she also had a crazy side too. But uh, <laughs> I, I really, really uh, am going to miss her, just talking to her every once in a while. I wanted to, to send condolences from the family in Indianapolis, Art Edmonds told me to say that, and so did uh, Gary Edmonds. Gary, my brother, is not doing well right now, but he is, he's, he's got high spirits. And then um, my cousin Charles, all of them send their, send their condolences because they could not make it today. And I, too, will say, if you guys ever need anything, just give me a call. I'm just a phone call away. Love you. Bye. Well, uh, my name is Kayla, and I know a lot of the family knows me. I've done a lot of people um, who's sitting there. I've done their hair. Um, I did uh, Miss Paulette's hair. We shared um, a lot of laughs together, um, but I couldn't just sit in my chair and not be reminded of when she was driving, she would come into the salon, and we'd sit there, and she'd say, guess where I got lost trying to get to this week? And I would say, Miss Paulette, how are you getting lost in Kokomo? We, it, it, she would say, I just get lost. I can't help it. And we would just laugh and laugh. So um, that was just one of my fondest memories with her. Um, I will say, even as she um, started to decline in her health, Miss Paulette didn't miss a hair appointment. Uh, she always made sure to come see me. So um, sure yeah, ma yes, Mother Link made sure of it. But um, I'm praying for the family. Um, she'll be greatly missed. going to talk unless they okay. <laughs> is this on yes can you hear me
to be. I owe it all to thee. so sweet to trust in Jesus. That's how I got through uh, since that phone call I got on March the 20th that told me that my sister had had a heart attack and that we was going to have to put on life support. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I guess I must have been asleep when it was time for the family tribute. But I have one. I'm going to start off by reading Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with goodness, gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has saved, made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his, of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, yes. and his truth endure to all generations. Amen. I had to write this down because I'm a senior citizen now. <laughs> I, te I tease my pastor and I, he, he's a few years younger than me so I said he's a junior senior citizen. 
<laughs> now I have made senior citizen grace. I, I would like to first thank everybody for coming out to, to this morning to help us, help us celebrate Paulette's home going. It has been a sad and happy time for us. Sad because we have lost the ability to communicate with the loved one. Laugh with her, cry with her, remember things with her, and yes, even get mad at her. <laughs> even to get mad at her. Happy because she doesn't have to go through this again. She doesn't have to die again. And, and she doesn't have to go this way again. No more suffering, no more sickness, not being able to do the things that she was used to do. She used to get really frustrated because she couldn't do things like she used to do anymore. We often talk about seeing our loved ones after we've gone, after we have transitioned. But I can see her now hobnobbing with, with all the kin that have gone before her, sitting around talking to Mama Flat, Mom and Dad, our little baby girl, uh, Nicole, who was stillborn, and our sister Eva, telling them stories and making them laugh, trying to fix stuff for them, maybe cookies, giving them some ice cream, Just doing little things to make them happy. Paulette was also a storyteller. I think everybody's talked about that, but uh, I would go, I'd be in the house and Maxine, Paulette, and Eva would go back to their room and they'd be sitting around laughing and talking and giggling kind of quietly. So I would stick my head in and I'd be here, I'm talking about uh, Julie, Doris, and Gina, and these are all made up names that people, Paulette had made up in this story. And then, and then they would be, a, I'd hear something that says, I don't want to be Silo anymore. I don't want to be Chaffee anymore. So and somebody that had gotten on her bad side and, and part of this story, now she's giving them another name, Silo Chaffee Diddy. And so then the, then the whole thing would break up. And since uh, I've been gone away, we, we still keep in touch and a lot. So we, I would call, and we have little names we have for each other. And so I'd say, can I speak to Sarlo? Can I? So they'd always say, come on, Bob, let's, let's give us the good names, not all the bad names. So they said, we're going to find you a name. Reluctantly, I'll say it, Snuffy. <laughs> So I'm known as Snuffy. <laughs> well, Paulette was also a character. She hated school when she was coming up. She was very, very sickly. In fact, she had uh, whooping cough as an infant. So she stayed skinny for a long time and she had red eyes. So sometimes she would get teased, so she didn't like to go to school. And of course I was the one that would have to take her to school. I'm a couple years older than her, so when I was in second grade, she was in kindergarten. Every afternoon, I'd, I'd go home for lunch, I'd come back and it was my task to take Paulette to school. I think Miss Vaughn, my second grade teacher, felt pity for me because she never counted me, never counted all the tardies that Paulette made me have. <laughs> <laughs> so one day, Paulette decided she was going to jerk away from me and go back home. <laughs> and she, uh -oh. 
That was the coldest day of the year. <laughs> so here she was. She was afraid to go back home, was afraid to go in the house because mom was home. Because a lot of times mom would have gone off to work someplace. But this time mom was home. So she stayed outside as long as she could. And she, had, she finally had to go in because she got so cold. And that was lesson learned. I didn't have very many more days that I had to be late for school. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I've gotta get the tears out of my eyes so I can finish reading what I wrote down here. The one thing I definitely want to say is see you later, Sister Sue. Before I say see you later, Sister Sue, I want to call your attention to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if, it, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will be no mean preceded those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain, excuse me, shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Yes. Therefore, 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 comfort me, comfort therefore. one another with these words. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Bronnie. You, uh, I noticed that it, it says that I'm going to do eulogy and words of comfort, but you've already done the words of comfort, so I just do the eulogy, okay? Yeah, no. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Comfort us with those words. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, I, I am so glad that I've been able to, to serve as pastor in the Amy Church because it has allowed me to meet some wonderful people and wonderful families. And this family, I'm not, I'm not just saying it just to, because I'm just trying to be nice and compliment you and stroke your ego, and I, but you're a nice family. And uh, I knew Eva before I met you. And, uh, and, uh, and my sister knew Eva, so I knew the family. I knew, Brent, Brent has already said we've known each other for 50, 11 years. And, uh, and everybody's just nice, just nice. And, and you know, and it's, it's nice to be nice, but you don't have to be nice. And so I, I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate being able to come and, and go. And I, and I, I, I be to appreciate to, to know that I've made everybody happy everywhere I've pastored. <laughs> I'm so glad to know that I've made everybody happy. Bishop. I make everybody happy at Wayman. Everybody happy. Some people are happy when I came, and, and some are going to be happy when I'm gone. Everybody's happy. But Paulette was one of those who was happy that I came. I know because when I would walk into the, the hospital and see her, or when I would walk into the, uh, the, the room at the, at the rehab center, she would, she would kind of look up and she would see me. That made me feel so good. 
it made me, I go there to bless her and she blesses me. And uh, most definitely we'll miss, I will miss her humor. What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Paulette Brownie knew. And she loved. What do you know? Father God, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. We pray, God, that you're blessed. Now send forward the word that we might declare amen. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16 through 30. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 18 through 30. Each tell the story of the rich young ruler. And by telling the rich young ruler to follow him, Jesus essentially told him to throw away his idols, his, you know, his wealth, his possessions, and follow the only one who could save him. Not that he needed to take a vow of poverty, but he needed to be willing to sacrifice everything in pursuit of everlasting life. The only one who would answer all his questions concerning everlasting life. In Deuteronomy 6 and 5, it exhorts us to love God with all our hearts, souls, and mind. To follow Jesus meant that this young man was to follow Jesus, to love Jesus, all he was. He was to Love Jesus for everything that he rendered. This young man, he was to love Jesus with all he was. Not what all he had. When you give up everything, sell all your possessions, it means that you are giving God all that you Are, you know, all that you are, not all that you have. To, to, to love Jesus with all he was, not what he had. The, the young rich ruler had a question about finding eternal life. We read in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? I would say that this young man took Jesus down a rabbit hole. A rabbit hole is used to refer to a bizarre and a confusing and a non-essential situation or environment typically from which it is difficult to extract oneself, a rabbit hole. In, in, in the book of Alice in Wonderland, it, it has been said that one common idea in the book is that it is a journey of a girl losing her childhood, innocent, and having a lack of experience, wisdom, and judgment, which causes her to have to be naive to being all that she could be. She, she starts in the tale by never questioning the improbabilities that present themselves in Wonderland. Go with me for a minute, yeah. And ends the book pointing out to the entire court that there are powerless and simply a pack of cards. In search of knowledge, Allison's adventures in Wonderland are related to the transition from childhood to adulthood. And the being of Allison's coming of age. Then you had that rabbit. The white rabbit, the white rabbit's pocket watch symbolized the passing of time in a greater sense. 
Alice's womanhood is growing closer and closer. And I chose to reference this story because Paulette was a reader. She liked to read books. I don't know if she's ever read this book or not. She, she was a reader. She, she was a storyteller. And, 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 and so she was like me. I like to tell a story too. I said, really? <laughs> yeah, Paulette, like, she was a storyteller. And, 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 and Paulette would take you down a rabbit hole in her search for knowing and knowledge. Yes, she would. Like, like the character in the story, Paulette, too, was on the transition, but her transition was not from childhood to adulthood. Paulette's transition was from life to life eternal. Paulette Browning was a woman in transition, searching on, on the quest to find the answer to life's many, many perplexed and, and, perplex and, and, and complex ex experiences. She, she, she would put the whole, the whole Bible study on notice. A after comments and, and after debating on the lesson, Sister Browning would then speak up and say something like, okay. I'm ready to take us down a rabbit hole. Wouldn't she? Wouldn't she say that, that, that and, and, then, and then after she would say that, she would proceed to take us down that rabbit hole. Didn't she? Life is mysterious and life is a complex thing. And life will take you down a rabbit hole sometimes, and, 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 and it is certainly true. Mankind has the ability to make artificial protein in the laboratory, and protein is a building block of life, but it is doubtful if any man or any woman will ever be able, actually able to create life, less, less, still less possible to make it out of nothing. Only God could do that. To, to say that life is only chemistry, as some atheistic biochemists do, it is grossly to underestimate, to understate the fantastic complexity of even the simplest form of life. We have, we have to come to understand to live is an amazing thing if we, if we live that we should live again. It's no more wonderful than, than we should live at all. If we should live, it's a wonderful thing. And Psalm 139 reminds us that indeed we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It, it, it would seem that a woman in the Bible named Martha didn't understand the significance of what Jesus was trying to tell her. I am the resurrection and the life. Martha was a little myth that Jesus had not reached her brother sooner than he did. She, she didn't, she didn't, she needed to be told that death is a part of life. Death is the way we all must go because Jesus came along so that we could experience the resurrection after a certain death. All must die. And, and so there, there may be someone here today asking questions like Martha. There might be someone here today full of questions like Martha trying to search for knowledge, trying to take us down a rabbit hole. I don't know. Somebody might ask, why do we have to die? Well, I, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of, of God. We, 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 we must die. Why do we have to die? Well, well, rich man dies and the poor man alike must die. The strong and the weak must die. The educated and the illiterate must die. The righteous and the wicked all along, all alike, all must die. The righteous, if they die, they shall live. For we pass from life to life. Somebody say amen. amen. From, 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 from the dust man was made and, and to the dust his body will return. We are reminded that the great and the rich and the, and the poor, the mighty and the weak, will be mingled together in the dust of the earth. It, it, it is wise for us to remember that we have, have been long God's power, which permits us to obtain the peace of joy and a joy in knowing a pending and a certain death. As humans, we may have power over our spirit 
of ours too excited to action, direct its thoughts, control its impulses, train its faculties, and develop its wonderful resources, but he and or she is utterly unable to retain it here to keep it in a permanent condition with the body. Can't do it. Won't happen. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9 and 27, and it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Yeah, we have to die, yeah. We are, we are dead in life without God. If you don't have God, you don't have the knowledge of God, we are dead anyway. And, and, and we're headed to an eternal death without God. Many people are dead, but they just don't know it. They, 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 they just lack the knowledge. No one can keep you, keep his soul or her soul alive. We, we have the marvelous opportunity and challenge to share with our offsprings the precious gift of life that is theirs. The challenge is even greater for all believers to humbly bow and worship God in spirit, truth, and service, and obedience. Life, life will take you down some rabbit holes. But, but thank God. Thank God, in, in that great getting up morning, thank God, you, you will not be able to, to send regrets. It, it, it makes sense to have your RSV in order. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in Jesus who said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and I prepare a place for you. And if, I, if, I, if, if, if you plan to make God's kingdom you must be willing to lay down this old building. For, for flesh and blood cannot take part in the kingdom of God. Because God's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. And only the righteous of God shall enter in. In other words, we must be born again. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that, that we, that you and I might live. Yes. Paulette Browning believed she lives. If you're going to make it home one day to the kingdom of God, you, you must develop an ability to love. Paulette Browning was one that did that. Paulette Browning was a woman who was not afraid to smile. Didn't, didn't waste time finding fault in others. She, she was a woman who loved life and she gave. She was a loving and a caring person. Even in her death, she's giving. Look at all the people that are here that she brought here today. Look at all the people that, that she may get dressed up and come to church. Look at, look, look, at that. look at all those people who came and filed through during the visitation time. Those who are thinking about their lives and, and what legacy they will leave and, and where they might spend eternity. Look at this. This family's together again. Paulette Brownie did that. After listening to all these things that people have been saying about Sister Brownie and the Brownie family. I will think about Paulette whenever someone takes me down a rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm telling you, she, I will remember her. I will remember that she knew she, that she knew that one day that, 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 that she had to leave this life. I, I will remember that she was not perfect, but yes, was a human. Yes, but, but we'll remember as her as a strong woman who told it as it was. She, she was known to shoot from the hip. It, it, it was said that, that she was nice but outspoken. She, she, she was that type of woman. It, it was said that she could get you told. Now, I didn't say that. Somebody told me that. <laughs> but she was a believer. She, she was a woman that understood who figured out a long time ago that, that lying and dying is more than life and death. She had to go down some rabbit holes to figure that out. When, when we lay down our lives for others, we're investing in ourselves, our time and our energies and our resources in someone other than ourselves. This woman, this woman took time for others. Even though she had no children, she was compassionate when it came to children. When it came to children. And, and like me, did I tell you that she liked telling the story? <laughs> she was serious about but she was, she was serious, but she, on occasion, she could be funny, too. To love someone is to give who you are. That's what Jesus was trying to tell that rich ruler. Yeah, to, love, to love me is to give who you are, all that you have. Everything that you think is precious, 
all that you, to love is to give everything. Give it all. Be willing to give everything and, and what you have to give that someone experience a better life on earth and then go to heaven. Sister Browning loved much. She loved her family deeply. Her faithfulness proved her love. Love and appreciated in the institution of the church. And, 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 I, and, and I said she was not perfect. She had faults. But God's love produced compassion in her. She, she blessed folk with her, her spirit of generosity because she blessed me. I, 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 remember her, I remember her for her generosity. John, 1 John 3 and 14 says, We have passed from death unto life because we have loved the brethren. The love she, has prepared, has, the love she had has prepared her for heaven. And I'm getting ready done. Sometimes as Christians, I'm almost done, yeah. We fail to love as we should. We fail to love others as we should. Some folk are just too selfish with the love that God has given them. Some folk are just too selfish. Love for God and for others assures Christians that they are prepared for heaven. That, that goodness, God's love, provides healing for someone today. Don't you know that you can't just bless those that you like, but you got to bless your enemies too? That's God's love. It provides healing even for those folks. It promotes hum humility. It, 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 it produces harmony. And, and it prepares us from heaven. So family, remember that God loves you. Family, remember that God loves you. You, you can find it difficult to believe that, that, you, that an awesome, almighty God of the universe could love you. But he does. You're unique. There's no one else like you. And no one who loves God loves you as God does. He formed you from the dust uh, and formed you for, 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 for his praise. Isaiah 43 tells us that. We did nothing to earn his love. Neither can we do anything to maintain or lose it. It's a free gift of God through Jesus. And Jesus is for those who need him. And so, family, if you need Jesus today, he's here for you. Give your burdens, your fears, your doubts to the Lord and leave them there. Doubts to God, we serve and he will. Those who believe in God, those who trust in God, will one day move from this old world of sickness and suffering and death and move to a life in a new world that has no end, has no sickness, has no suffering, has no death. Amen. Hallelujah, family. Take courage today. Family, look up. Your refuge is in Christ. In him, you are safe and you're secure from the earthquakes of life. From, from all the rabbit holes, God's peace will calm your storms, your fears, and keep you anchored on the solid ground. I dare you, dare you to trust God. The greatest honor you can give your parents and your grandparents is the life that you live. Remembering the legacy you carry, no matter where you're going, what you're going through, it always renews hope to know that someone knows and someone cares. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you today, family. Thank you, Brother Brownie, for those comforting words. You took a whole paragraph from me. Uh -huh. <laughs> one of the most comforting things, the feelings, one of the most comforting feelings in the world is to know that, that, that you're going through. They better come on. I'm going to keep talking. In, in, in every valley and climbing every mountain, when our hearts are broken, when our spirits are tried, when our bodies hurt, family and friends here, I, I want you to know that God knows and God understands and God cares. When you're struggling to hold up the bloodstained banner, when, 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 when we are shining a light in darkness, when we're trying to live a righteous and a holy life, God knows God cares, and God never leaves us alone. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. 
We thank you, Father God, for everlasting life. We thank you, Father God, for the promise that when this life is over, you've prepared a place for us to go. Bless us now, Father God, as we leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen. All but the family, please stand. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? For I know that my Redeemer lives and at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin had been thus destroyed, then from my flesh shall I see God, who I shall see on my eyes, and my eyes shall be behold and not another. For my heart faints within me, for we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we carry nothing out of the world. The wondrous love of Jesus. Because when we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day that will be.